Barking Up the Wrong Tree by Eric Barker What You'll Learn Why self-awareness, hard work, and realistic planning are the keys to success. The importance of developing an internal narrative and maintaining a strong social network. How to avoid the trap of overconfidence. Who is this for? High-achieving professionals who want to advance their careers, academic leaders who want to translate their academic success to real-world success, any individual who wants to achieve success in their personal and professional lives. Key Insights Baker uses science-based cases to help explain the basic keys to achieving success. He shows how true success must first come from self-awareness, which helps people understand what success means in the context of their life. Passions, talents, and interests must align with career goals before an individual can become successful. Successful people also have to be practical, create a realistic plan, and work hard to create opportunities for themselves. Success comes from hard work, not from luck. They must also embrace failure and be open to understanding how their particular weakness and strengths can be nurtured and applied in ways that will yield positive outcomes. They should avoid the trap of overconfidence, but construct optimistic narratives that allow them to build a framework to best achieve their goals. Success is defined by the individual. There is no single definition of success. True success is relative and comes only when your life aligns with your personal goals, not with others' ideas of success. Therefore, true success can only be achieved after people understand what their personal goals are. In fact, one of the biggest barriers to success is when people do not understand themselves and do not know what personal success looks like for their life. However, understanding your personal vision of success is only the first step toward achieving it. At first, people should be open to trying many different things in order to discover what it is they are truly passionate about achieving. Once they have found their passion, They should then plan a course of action to achieve success. It is also important to keep in mind that nobody achieves success right away. Failure is an important step in the process toward success because it can help you understand how your goals align with your strengths. For example, Oprah Winfrey, one of the world's most celebrated television personalities, was fired from her first job as a Baltimore news anchor because she did not like upsetting people and thus was not able to ask the subjects of her stories the tough questions the job required. Her personal strengths were not well aligned with the strengths needed to be a great reporter. However, this failure helped her identify that her personal strengths lay not in interrogative reporting, but in the compassion, empathy, an ability to connect with others that led her to become a successful television host. Success is contextual. Few things are strictly good or bad, but can be perceived as one way or the other, depending on the context. People's qualities need to be nurtured in order to make them grow and thrive into positive traits. Some people possess qualities known as intensifiers, which can make typically negative traits turn positive when they are used in the right context. For example, the nonprofit founder Daniel Kish was rendered blind as an infant due to retinal cancer. However, rather than allowing himself to be limited by his blindness, Kish instead taught himself how to navigate the world through echolocation using tongue-clicking sounds to find his way around the world. As a child, he was able to learn to ride his bike this way, and later on, he earned two master's degrees and opened a non-profit, 
World Access for the Blind to help other blind people learn echolocation. However, this positive outcome wasn't a given, nor was it luck. It was possible because his parents, particularly his father, nurtured his abilities, which enabled him to turn the experience of being blind into a positive identifier. Instead of viewing his blindness as a negative limitation, Kish used the experience to innovate and become a success. Long versus short-term success Sometimes, behavior that can seem good in the short term can ultimately lead to long-term loss. For example, lying and cheating can provide an immediate gain in the short term. But over time, your relationships will deteriorate, the trust will falter, and this behavior will bring about a net negative in the long term. Alternatively, fostering strong relationships may cause short-term losses, but can bring about long-term gains. The short-term focus is why it can seem like nice guys finish last. According to a Harvard Business Review study, men who rank lowest on the agreeability scale make around $10,000 more per year than agreeable people. However, this does not mean that nice guys do always finish last. In fact, According to a study of engineers, salesmen, and medical students conducted by Wharton School professor Adam Grant, helpers were split between the top and bottom of success metrics. This is because people who cooperate and build long-term relationships tend toward success, but people who are too giving or do not have a high degree of skepticism can get taken advantage of and will not get ahead. Building relationships with your superiors that are based on flattery, even if it is not sincere, has also been shown to contribute to success and high-performance reviews. Understanding something's value over the short versus the long term is an important part of success, since it can help you understand how much time is worth investing in something before it becomes more beneficial to walk away. For example, the nonprofit The Wounded Warrior Project, which helps wounded American veterans, was focusing most of their efforts on the short term gains they achieved from hosting high profile fundraisers and campaigns, which raised national awareness of their work. However, in 2016, the group realized that most of their money and efforts were going towards their PR and event planning projects, not towards the veterans they were supposed to be helping. A new CEO took over and began prioritizing the company's goals towards providing long-term support for veterans over the short-term but ultimately less valuable goal of raising awareness. Academic success is not the same as real-world success. Achieving success in academia does not necessarily translate to achieving success in the real world. While getting good grades is not a bad thing, it does not predict real-world success. According to a study conducted by Boston College of 81 high school valedictorians they followed after graduation, almost none became revolutionary successes. This is because academia rewards a very specific type of success, in which successful individuals tend to follow the rules and don't upset the status quo. However, in the real world, risk-takers and innovators can achieve great success as well. In fact, 58 of the 400 people on the Forbes 400 list never obtained a college degree. There are two types of leaders, filtered and unfiltered. Filtered leaders are the people who tended towards academic success and generally have credentials from academia or other prestigious institutions. They are educated, but generally not prone to disruption. Unfiltered leaders, on the other hand, often reach their positions through alternate methods. For example, John Mackey, the CEO and co-founder of Whole Goods, is an unfiltered leader. 
He is a college dropout who worked at a vegetarian co-op before becoming a businessman. On the other hand, Robert Edwards, the CEO of Safeway, is an example of a filtered leader. He holds an MBA and worked his way up the chain of corporate management before achieving the rank of CEO. Both are examples of good leaders. Edwards is trustworthy and steady, but unlikely to cause any surprises. Mackey, on the other hand, has an innovative streak that can lead to great changes, including selling the company to Amazon for almost $14 billion in 2017. Internal narratives can promote or hinder individual success. An individual's internal narrative is the story they tell themselves that helps them frame the world around them. These narratives can help us derive meaning from life by creating a story about each part of our lives, including career, relationships, and identity, thus creating a framework for us to live according to the aspirational narratives we have created. For this reason, the most successful narratives are not always the truest to life. Optimists generally have an outlook that is skewed more positively than reality, but they still tend to achieve greater health and success than their more realistic peers. Sometimes, these narratives can also make it easier to achieve a goal by changing the framework by which we perceive a task. For example, the U.S. Navy SEALs were able to increase the percentage of new recruits that made it through their notoriously difficult Hell Week simply by teaching them to use a positive internal narrative. Similarly, one of the world's top brain surgeons, Alfredo Quinones Hinososa, who runs a lab at John Hopkins Hospital, was born into poverty. He was able to achieve success in his life by never giving up and sticking to the optimistic narrative he told himself about his own life. Framing an unpleasant chore as a game can also make it easier to complete. For example, the narrative many people form around their diet and exercise habits begin in childhood, and it can affect long-term health success as an adult. Many nutritionists say a big problem most people face when trying to achieve weight loss is getting over the emotional attachments they have held on to for years towards eating certain unhealthy foods. To combat this, one Kentucky school district has stopped providing food-based rewards in an effort to prevent children from forming an ingrained emotional narrative around junk food as a treat at an early age. Exercise can work in a similar way. Viewing fitness as a game rather than a chore can make it more fun. One app called Zombies Run utilizes this technique by treating running as a game by turning the run into a mission where the runner has to speed up to escape zombies and complete the mission. Try, fail, try again. Most people overvalue the importance of luck and undervalue the importance of failing. When it comes to achieving success, it is important to keep trying things over and over and not get discouraged if it doesn't pay off right away. Hard work and persistence are the main ingredients to success over luck and even intelligence. Studies have shown that the correlation between IQ and success caps at around 120 IQ points. Any points higher than 120 have not been shown to correspond to any greater success in life. Richard Branson, the CEO of Virgin, credits his success in business not to luck, but to hard work. For example, when Branson was trying to get the 1973 Virgin Records hit song Tubular Bells to become a hit in the United States, he spent a lot of time working with the head of Atlantic Records, Ahmet Ertegen. As it happened, while Ertegen was listening to the record, the director of the film The Exorcist happened to walk in and hear tubular bells. He liked the song so much, he decided to use it in the movie's soundtrack. 
While this may have been a lucky coincidence, Branson attributes this moment to the many hours of hard work he put in convincing Ertigan to give the song a chance. It is also important the individuals focus their work on something that is meaningful. Otherwise, they run the risk of becoming burnt out due to overwork with nothing to show for it. Hard work should also not come at the expense of personal relationships, which are essential to people's well-being. Meaningful work should not become an obsession, and individuals should remember to relax and keep a clear perspective on their work and life balance. The Importance of Social Skills Successful leaders are typically extroverts. One study has even shown that the most popular 20% of students in high school went on to earn up to 10% more money in adulthood than their less popular peers. This is because most leaders have access to a large social network they can use to advance their position and find new opportunities. This is especially true in corporate positions such as CEOs, where networking is essential to rising to the top of the ladder. However, it is important to network in a way that feels warm and authentic, not cold and calculated. In a corporate environment, forming social connections, especially finding a mentor, will more likely lead to greater long-term success than skipping social functions to work on solo projects. For example, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt used his strong social skills to his advantage when he met members of the British royal family in 1939. He invited them to come for a rather informal picnic at his Hyde Park estate, rather than an official meeting at the White House. This unofficial meeting actually helped foster a closer relationship between America and Great Britain, which became especially important for maintaining a strong British-American alliance during World War II. However, introversion can also have its place. Long hours of time spent alone at work lends itself to developing skills and expertise. It is widely known that achieving expertise in any skill requires 10,000 hours of practice, and extroverts rarely have time to dedicate to the long hours of practice necessary to achieve this level of expertise. For example, according to research conducted by Olympic medalist David Hemery, 89% of top-achieving athletes identify as introverts. Balance confidence with self-awareness. Confidence is generally perceived to be a good thing, but too much confidence can cause problems. While confidence can lead to decisive action, it can also prevent people from accurately and realistically assessing their situation, which can lead to mistakes. People who are overconfident often think they are always right, which can cause them to misjudge certain situations. This problem is even worse when the overconfident person is someone who has an expert or leadership position, and the mistakes they make have even greater consequences. Overconfidence can also lead to reduced empathy. Increased power has been associated with a rise of selfishness and has been correlated with higher rates of lying and even higher instances of cheating on spouses. Leaders are particularly prone to the problem of overconfidence because they are already in a position of power. Their status elevates them, which boosts their self-confidence, but it can also become dangerous if it makes them more susceptible to bravado and close-mindedness and more resistant to making changes when necessary. Overconfidence is a particularly big problem in the corporate world, where traditional management structures elevate certain people to high-ranking positions. According to Joanne S. Lublin of the Wall Street Journal, recent corporate trends are trying to replace this hierarchical structure with a flatter, more transparent one. For example, the CEO of one tracking company, 
felt confident about his company's safety record. But their safety record data actually showed something different. The company's trucks actually had a high occurrence of near misses on the road. Rather than letting his confidence blind him to reality, this CEO accepted the data's results and used them to improve. He implemented new safety training, which enabled the company to actually improve its safety record. On the other hand, Travis Kalanick, the co-founder and former CEO of Uber, became overconfident after reaching an almost $70 billion valuation. He began acting recklessly and ignoring problems that arose within his company, which ultimately led to his being forced out of his position. The key is to balance a healthy sense of confidence with a good sense of self-awareness and understanding of your flaws and mistakes. However, it is also important to maintain a sense of compassion and the ability to forgive yourself for your flaws. The goal is to be self-aware enough to address and improve your mistakes without becoming overwhelmed and discouraged by them. The main takeaway. Success is highly individual. To become successful, individuals should understand how their passions and strengths align with their goals and not be afraid of failure, which is an important step to achieving this understanding. Realistic plans and hard work are more important to success than luck, timing, or even academic success. Achieving success requires innovation, risk taking, long-term planning, and a strong social network. An optimistic internal narrative can also help individuals develop a framework to help them achieve their goals. Individuals who achieve success should be careful to avoid the trap of overconfidence and remain self-aware yet compassionate in order to continue to grow and improve. Hi, I'm Rhonda. And this is an exclusive audiobook video recorded for the Audiobook Master Channel. Enjoy your audiobook and have fun learning. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so you'll get updated on our next upload. If you liked the video, give us a thumbs up and say your thoughts about the book we just covered. Do you want to listen to a summary or review of a book that we haven't covered in the past? Say it in the comments below or send us a message. Don't forget to check our other uploads. Enjoy listening!